deal with the claims. I, I was in the issue of the Mark of Mobile today. And on Monday before I went, I went to meet, meet Chet Brody, the MSP for doing that area. If we are independent, this guy should get a medal, let me tell you. He dived in to the National Archives because some folk, older folk had been telling him about things that happened suspiciously down off the coast of Ayrshire. Some a long time ago, 1970s, 1980s. And Chick dived into the archives. And what he found was there's oil and gas under the waters of the Firth of Clyde. Why do you and I not know about it? And I was a Labour MP at the time. And I can remember Davy Lambie, who was the MP for North Ayrshire, asking questions about it. But we didn't have any research facility in the days. There was no freedom of information, so they palmed us off. Well, not only did Chick discover that there's oil and gas in considerable quantities in the climate, but they kept about it. But the other this letter of 1983, which refers to a letter written by a guy, one man, called Roger Mansell, who was a civil servant, nobody had elected him, written in 1981. And uh, this letter says, Roger Mansell gave a blunt refusal to agree to any right under any circumstances, rules of testing the area's hydrocarbon potential. And I would expect only a very compelling reason would lead the Ministry of Defence to such a request. You remember Grangemouth, where one man held five million folk in his hand, threatening to close that plant. We at least get who he was. This year, we've never heard of before, one man stopped any development of the oil and gas in the cloud from the Ministry of Defence because he wanted to sail the Polaris and then the Trident submarine safely up the climb past the Isles of Grey out into the open sea. And he couldn't do that if there were rents all over the Firth of Clyde. Now he took that decision and they obeyed him all over the place. While our shipbuilding industry, our steel industry, our coal mining industry, our industrial base in Glasgow in the west of Scotland was getting decimated. We had an incredible opportunity we didn't know about to have a new Aberdeen in that triangle between Glasgow, Renfrewshire and North Ayrshire. A new industry of oil and gas that would have brought us jobs, would have brought us oil rig building jobs, vessel building jobs, Prestwick Airport becoming a helicopter centre for that new oil field. And we didn't know about it. Chick Brody, as I said, should get a medal for unearthing this information at this time. <coughs> if we vote no, the oil and gas remains in the cloud. We don't get any of it, and we remain poor, impoverished, and our ways of get no chance whatsoever. Vote yes, we get rid of Trident, and the cloud is ours. And what is underneath it? is ours. And I've been advocating, not that we franchise it to Shell and BP, that we create a Scottish National Oil Corporation. Our oil corporation. By the way, it's no bother doing that. How do you do it? You go and buy an oil company. And there's nothing new in that. Happens all over the world at the present time. And we have no bother borrowing money in the international market to buy an oil company I would go to Abu Dhabi, I used to work in the Arab world, and I could get that money, no bother, because they know the oil industry and the collateral is good. That would give us experience in the oil industry that we could then transfer to the client. And it wouldn't be just taxation. We would be getting for the oil and gas in the client out with the black stuff and the real stuff itself. And that's where the wealth lies. We have been in a prison of lies on oil since the day and hour the first drop landed on the mainland. As far as what's happened in Western Shetland, 
I don't know. But I, knowing the background, that they lied to us before, if they have in fact taken those men off and tell them not to come back until after the referendum, it's because there's something yeah. significant there.